Let me start off by saying I do have a pronoun. One that I am proud to carry and become an immediate friend, call me American. <laughs> Let me tell you why I'm so optimistic, my friends. Because I know of a country that has the grit and tenacity. That's America. I know of a country that God blesses us because we have good hearts. That's America. And I recognize that we're going to be up against evil for quite a while. Now, evil is something that my, my race has been dealing with for over 60 years now. It's called Marxism, socialism. They steal our hopes and dreams. They steal our history. You wonder why would Marxists want to steal our history? It was Karl Marx who said the first battleground, this 1800s, is the, is the rewriting of history. Why? Because if they steal our history, they steal pride in our past, appreciation for our present, and our vision for our future. And they've been doing it for a long time. As they've stolen our history, what they did not remember, what they did not learn, is that Americans do not like bullies. They did not learn that within a DNA, we yearn for freedom. They did not learn that, yes, we live in this freedom bubble, but once we're attacked, we fight like hell to keep our freedom. I'm so excited and optimistic because I have an opportunity to share my vision for our country, that my race can be the, a, a warning buoy. My race can let, us, let Americans know, do not let this go because it will destroy us. It was my race, my upbringing taught us that we never, ever beg for respect. We command respect through meritocracy. We as Americans are never looked at as whiners, weenies, and wimps. We love the tenets of faith, family, free market, and education. And because of that, my race led the country in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. This is something you won't hear from the left. In the growth of the middle class, men matriculating for college, men committed to marriage, and a percentage of entrepreneurs. We had entrepreneurs everywhere in the free market, and middle class was everywhere when I was growing up. That was destroyed between 1970 and 2000s. Now, here, here we are today, though, 2022. Update. 2020, 100,000 black women left the Democratic Party to vote for uh, Governor DeSantis because they cared about their kids' education more than they cared about a party. 18% of black men left the Democratic Party and voted for President Trump. Why? We're tired of the black profiteers, the hirelings. Those who do anything to keep their job, they will betray their race, betray our country. We're tired of the arrogance. We're tired of the ignorance. The, the, the quiet secret is very simply this. The Hispanic and black Ameri Americans are waking up. Our communities are pulling ourselves back from the dark abyss. The Democratic Party loses. We're thriving. We're going to grow our businesses, love our families, educate our kids, move to middle class. The Democratic Party loses when we do that. The Democratic Party has been high or as addicts on our party, on our misery. We're going to, in November, break that habit, cold turkey. Send them back, back home. Let me just say this. We have to come together, my friends. We can't get cocky. One of the things about the, the, the team that I played with, the Raiders, the Raiders, we were underdogs from the very beginning to the very end. We were the first wild card to win a Super Bowl game because with every single play, every single play, every single game, we gave everything we had. We have to do that now as a nation. When you get on your knees tonight, first of all, pray for our country. And then thank God that you have been chosen to fight to be on the field at this time in our, history, in our country's, country, country's history. We're at the right time. We cannot get cocky. Look at ourselves as underdogs, because we are. Big media, big tech, woke corporations, 